let's fix that. How about that? Oh, man. I hate when I do that. What is up, everyone? I am Chris Knight, and this is The Real Review 3000, and this is Movie Talk with Chris and Stieg. Uh, basically, we've been doing a few of these. We started with uh, way back when Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049. Uh, we went to uh, RoboCop. We've done Falling Down, The Shining. I'm trying to go back and see of all the ones we've done. Awesome. Yeah, Jaws. We did Jaws, uh, Willow, Predator. The, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, so we've done... This is going on... This is the seventh one we've done, actually. So that's kind of cool. And, uh, you know, each time, I think we kind of refine it and make it a little better. I think that's how everything works, though. You just kind of figure out the things that work best for everything. But uh, let's t let's talk today, guys, about Conan the Barbarian, a 1982 movie, uh, basically the breakout role for Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, he had had at least one before that. I think Hercules in New York was his first one, uh, where they gave him a rather distinct American accent in that. And uh, this was actually, I think, if I remember right, I could be wrong, his first speaking role where they used his actual voice. And when he was when he was actually uh, casted, they were worried because he was really unpolished and they were trying to figure out how they could make this movie play the way they wanted it to. So they hired some really good actors and the names of uh, James Earl Jones. And, uh, yeah, and I just forgot because we were just talking about this. Uh, oh, yeah, Max von Sydow. Thank you, Max von Sydow. Yeah, and so w with those two, it really grounded the film with some clout because they could act. And the product, truthfully, came across as a very – um, well put together th film, I think, and um, with James Earl Jones as the villain in this, basically, I think that it, it makes a real good uh, foil to what Arnold Schwarzenegger is in this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I do believe James, no, sorry, Arnold Schwarzenegger had asked James Earl Jones to help him during the during the movie with the acting and he mm -hmm. he had told everyone uh, just treat me as a trained dog tell me exactly what to do which is uh, a very uh, humble thing to do actually because he admitted he didn't have the acting ability yep comic chat danny says crom do this for me and if you don't then the hell with you i'll do it myself <laughs> He gets it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He does. Danny's a good guy. I don't know if you've watched yeah. our, our Chaos Central shows. Um, oh, they're, they're usually usually on after. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're you're normally asleep. No, I'm no. just finishing a stream when you guys oh. are halfway done. Well, you guys can all you can always go back and rewatch them. Huh? <laughs> all these streams you guys can rewatch. So let's get down to this, uh, Stieg. Uh, is there anything you want to start with? You want to just start right from the get-go about what this is, or you want to talk about the overall uh, character and where Conan comes from? Well, Conan was written by uh, Robert E. Howard in the uh, 1920s. Mm -hmm. uh, Howard was a, was a young man who, who took care of his ill mother, and he used i guess writing conan as escapism and when she passed away when he was 30 um he killed himself so he he did all that stuff with conan before 30 mm -hmm. which is uh, very good um and like i said this was in the 1920s and conan comics are still made today so points for longevity right oh well, yeah uh, given that it's technically fantasy i i'd say more sword and sorcery though because it lacks the lore mm -hmm. 
but uh, it predates Tolkien by uh, by uh, twenty years, mm -hmm. which is uh, something I think Howard should get credit for. Well, for sure. I mean, I think that. Uh, well, I don't know. I I guess I'll put it in the realm of music. You know, everybody raves and raves about. Uh, people like uh, the Beatles, but the Beatles were only real act, really active for about five to six years. No. And, and then when you think about all the stuff they did and all the number ones and stuff like they had and the accomplishments they did as a band, then it, it really kind of puts in perspective, my God, they did that in five to six years. It's just crazy. You know, nowadays, you know, you got Taylor Swift, you got, you know, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, uh, One Direction, whatever. And, you know, they do some of the same stuff. They hit these number one records and stuff. They get these number ones, but it's in like seven years and stuff like that. It's like. Yeah, and that crap is made in the lab. Well, so. and I, yeah, I mean, there's that too. But I'm just saying that, you know, a lot of this stuff, it's like, yeah, but they've done it in a much longer time period than. So and yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with Conan. I mean, it's it, it didn't become really popular until the '60s, but this stuff was around for a while, and it kind of it kind of I guess it, it, in the '30s, '40s, and so on and so forth, it was more what you would call cult. It was a cult favorite, and as yeah. it went along, people spread that word along, and it became more and more. And I guess when things became easier to print, and those co comic books and stuff were able, able to be printed easier that's where the boom actually started to come from. Yeah, I think they became uh, comics later because Howard wrote short stories, basically. Mm -hmm. but basically, it's Conan on some new adventure, you know, mm -hmm. not linked to the previous ones. And, yeah. Uh, which is fine, you know? Uh, I, I think I think the comic book industry and, and books in general have lost that because that's uh, a bit like the old Westerns, isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. uh, Bill and Ben and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the, the Lone Gunman, the, the Westerns, the, like the TV, the episodic stuff was normally about the one guy, the main guy, like the gunman or the rifleman. I mean, things like that. It was about that guy going to a, a spot after spot, yeah, and running into new things. The only thing that was consistent and stayed the same was your main character. The yeah. situations and the places changed. And yeah, a lot of things these days have left that. Um, but then again, there's a time and a place for that type of thing. I think that when they did that with like the Mandalorian, it didn't work as well. No, because that one is supposed to be tied to a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Which is, you know, what Star Wars says is supposed to be one consistent tapestry. Yeah. Exactly. So um, let's get on with this. Uh, the movie starts out where we have a a guy, a blacksmith. Uh, if I remember right, right, his father is a blacksmith, right, and yeah. forges he forges the sword and tells him of uh, the riddle of steel. Yeah, and the uh, mythology of Crumb. Yes. So basically, it sets up everything perfectly in just mm -hmm. a minute or two. Uh, then there's a massacre by a band of raiders, uh, led by, uh, Thulsa Doom, who is played by James Earl Jones and can't, uh, Conan's father is killed. And oh, the, whole damn, the whole damn village. Yeah. And the mom too. Yeah. Um, but the sword is taken by Thosala. Um, and if I remember right, doesn't he take the sword and decapitate his mother? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah right, in front, uh, right in front of Conan. Yeah. Hey, Dandelion Fluff, how you doing? Uh, and Danny says real quick, I liked when the uh, wizard does the spell and they have to fight the ghost or demons from stealing his body. Uh, the Japanese guy, Conan and uh, Valeria, were, perfect, were the perfect trio. Um, they were. The, the, we'll get to that here in a minute. But... Um, Basically, let's talk really quick about violence in this movie. <laughs> There's violence in this movie. I remember the first decapitation I think I ever saw was actually from Tarzan from like the 70s. 
I can't remember the 60s or 70s Tarzan movie. I think maybe it was 80s. Uh, this was the second decapitation that I'd ever seen. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this one yeah. has uh, at least two. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, it has to be in it because Conan as a franchise is R rated big time. Oh, yeah, for sure. And you need to stick to the source materials, so you can't have whatever crap you saw in the Red Sonya yeah. movie. I'm trying to remember because Doom has he's able to he's like uh, he's kind of like a sorcerer, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, and uh, he's able to uh, kind of hypnotize you. With his hair. Yeah, he's he's a different race. It's like a, a yeah. smooth person. Yeah. And I remember that's isn't that how he I think he does that to Conan's mother, and that's when he decapitates her, is because he like holds her still yeah, yeah. long enough to do it. Yeah, and they uh they try to make James Earl Jones look kind of otherworldly. Mm -hmm. Uh he's black with blue eyes and he has very straight hair. And they, uh, I saw that on the making of the Conan movie, um, to, to make him look like something, you know, um, like a different race almost. Mm -hmm. uh, anyways, uh, so, so Tulsa and his barbarians, his, uh, his uh, raiders kill all, I think they kill all the adults and then they entrap or, enslave all the children um and they they chain them up uh, to a large work mill uh, the wheel of pain right yeah something like that yeah i think it's the wheel of pain uh and then basically conan survives this and grows up uh into adulthood but i mean basically <laughs> goes from a child to being this huge muscular guy, um, yeah. it's, it's, it's a pretty quick. I mean, it's just like think about a it's a prologue. That first little bit is just setting up what happened yeah. in the past, and now you know that they've got to go forward. And uh, you know, they just kind of jump through it because really everything that happens in between that, I guess, isn't important. Um, it's uh, the the wheel scene is great because you see him get bigger and bigger, and. Yeah all that but that whole beginning is my major gripe about the, uh, the movie because conan was never a slave it goes completely against the the character it's like having um uh, uh, an indiana jones movie where indiana jones can't read you know yeah yeah i i, I remember that um it was just one of those things that uh I guess it's Hollywood for you that they that they're going to try to, um, I guess make some. I, I guess they figured that there's no reason why Conan wouldn't want to go and do the things he does if he wasn't enslaved, which doesn't make sense because you'd think once you kill your mom and dad, that's enough reason to go and. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the uh, remake or rather the the reboot. Yeah. With uh, Jason Momoa, does his origin story perfectly mm -hmm. because he was born on the battlefield, mm -hmm. and that's the first thing you see. You see his mom is pregnant, and then she gets impaled by a sword, and you see the the sword just almost hit the baby, and then he gets born on the battlefield. Yeah. Um, what do you like that version better than the original? Uh, that beginning, yeah, okay. but just just the beginning. Yeah, but, uh, I, the reboot stuck closer to the source material than the original. But if I remember right, it was watered down as far as the violence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, it looked almost like a Marvel movie in a way. And um, what's her name? Rose McGowan was in it, and she wasn't good at all. But um. Jason Momoa was excellent. Mm -hmm. Comic Chess says most awesome most awesome pick is Conan sitting on a throne with the spears 
um, and with his hand on his chin. He has a crown on, and it says he gets his own throne one day, but that is another story. Yeah, that was that was done in the uh, comics. Yep. Okay. Um, King Conan comics, but uh, yeah. So um, basically, he grows up. Uh, his master, if I remember right, in this uh, trains him to be a gladiator. That's kind of the whole point of the muscular side of it. Um, and then basically, they don't say how many, but they just basically say he ends up uh, winning countless fights, receiving training and education in the East, if I remember right. Like he is out, like in. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, China area. Yeah, they don't. I don't think they actually say that, but it's pretty obvious the way they depict it. Um, and then basically, he's freed. Yeah, because um, they don't dare to keep him cap captive anymore. This mm -hmm. is too yeah. Uh, then, the, then basically, uh, if I remember right, there's the dog scene. There's a scene where he's chased by dogs. Uh, yeah. Soon after that. And, and he, he uh, enters like an, an old tomb. By the they were going to have a, a fight with that skeleton. Yeah. There, but they uh, didn't have a budget or something. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I've heard that, too. I heard that they had shot uh, parts of it, but they just could never come up with the concept of what to use uh, and how to do it on the other end, or that, yeah, the money ran out, something like that. Um, this this did have, if I remember right, I had to, I had to go look. Um, its original budget was... Um, 20 million and it gained almost 50 million more. Uh, well, yeah, almost 60 actually. I mean, the, what this movie did with money was really good, but um, yeah, he goes into the tomb, I believe it's an Atlantean tomb. Um, he, re he gets a sword there, an ancient sword. And then he basically continues these travels, uh, encountering a, a prophetic witch. And uh, what's the name? Oh, so Sabata, Subatai. So Subatai. That's how you say it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's played when he basically uh, meets him. Played by Milius's friend, who is a serper and not an actor. Yeah. But he does. He, he does. Um, it does the job well in this movie. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Um, but then uh, the witch gives him some advice to go and <laughs> seek out Doom. Yeah, she she tells him of uh, uh, the the symbol mm -hmm. that Colin saw on uh, Doom's banners and stuff, mm -hmm. and tells him to go to Zamora, which is a country. Well, I'm not sure which direction because I don't know where Conan is at that point, but it's um, it's near the middle of the map if you if you've seen the Conan world map. Mm -hmm. uh, Parrot Head, um, yeah, it, it, he mentions uh, Parrot Head says in the remake Conan is cut out of his mother by uh, by his father. Yeah, um, and then. Uh, and then he also says, what do you guys think of the animated series? I don't think about it. <laughs> I, I kind of expected that answer. There, um, there, there was an animated movie about to happen. And mm -hmm. They almost finished it. It was based on, on one of the most popular Robert E. Howard stories. Uh, it had Mark Hamill and Ron Perlman uh, doing the voice work. But it ended up in development hell or it was... Oh, you know, like so many things like this do. Yeah, it, it's made, but it's not released anywhere. It's just, it's, it's somewhere. Yeah, I would love to see a movie like this made with the treatment of heavy metal, but not, yeah. you, you understand what I mean? Like that really, that, that type of animation style, that would really suit this well. Um, okay, so they go to the city of Zamora and uh, seek out Doom. There is when they meet uh, Valeria. Yeah, they're they're about to. Uh, well, uh, before that, 
Conan gets drunk and punches a camel. Oh yeah, that's true. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, he knocks the camel out. Um, this is actually the movie where Conan does the most. Uh, sorry, Arnold does the most violence towards animals. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually find the uh, compilations on YouTube with uh, Schwarzenegger <laughs> doing animal cruelty in movies. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is um, this is where it started. Okay, uh, we'll do this one real quick too. I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat too. Do you like this movie better or the second one? No, this one. Yeah, I am wild. Yeah, the, the second one was kind of just thrown together. And I mean, while there are parts of it that I didn't mind, this is the gold standard we have as far as movies go of Conan or any. I won't say yeah. anything Conan, but this is a pretty good standard of it. And I think uh, when they did the second one, they kind of kind of pissed away a lot of things. Yeah, the uh, the guy who owned the studio uh stepped in on the second one and decided hey this this should be a family franchise yeah because that makes sense yeah because yeah so, it was more comedic too if i remember right wasn't it yeah it's it's uh how, how can it be comedic when you have a movie called conan the the destroyer yeah yeah well in the second one he does punch the same camel again mm -hmm. and a horse punches a horse too yeah. Um, when they find Valeria, they go. They raid a tower of serp or the tower of serpents. Um, basically, looting it of uh, you know jewels and valuables, and then they have to slay this giant snake in the process. And it's uh, a pretty, yeah. it's a pretty awesome scene. I mean, yeah, the uh, the snake looks good. It still does. I mean, again, yeah, you got to kind of understand that it's not CGI, not that I'm complaining, because I, I even said it the other day, Ray, and I know he didn't do this. I don't think he did. I'm pretty sure he didn't. But Ray Harryhausen and Jason and the Argonauts is still, some of those scenes that they did with the skeletons and other things are still amazing to this day, especially when you think of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shoots they had to do to get each of those scenes done. And if I remember right, this was done stop motion also, wasn't it? Uh, no, I think they used a, a fake snake. Did they? Okay, I couldn't yeah, remember. It's, you can see him stab it through the head and the blood spraying everywhere. And uh, mm -hmm. He actually chops it in three, I think, after uh, his friend nails his, the snake's head to the wall with arrows. So, And then basically, what was that? Poor snake. Mm-hmm. Uh, they get away, they kill the snake, da, 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 da. they take their loot and they celebrate. And Conan has his way with Valeria. <laughs> yeah, there's no other way to put it. Um, he shags her. Oh, yeah, he does. He does. He does. He does. Yes, all night long. <laughs> uh, but, but soon after that. And I'm not remember. I'm trying to remember. Is it right after that that they get captured? Yeah, they get captured by the uh, local lord, mm -hmm. King Orsic or Ors Orsric. Osric. Osric. I see. I can't even say these words anymore. Jesus. Hey, United. How you doing? Good to see you, uh, guys. Please smash that like button. Don't forget to uh, tweet us out. Let other people know we're on right now. And uh, thank you very much for being in the chat. We greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah, so they get caught. Orzric uh, catches him, who requests one thing that he they rescue his daughter. Yeah, she's been uh, basically uh, brainwashed by yeah. uh, a snake cult. Yes, uh, the cult of the Falls of Doom. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he has heard of uh, another lord has been stabbed to death by his son. We used a special snake dagger, and he had found that same kind of dagger in his daughter's room before she left. And he wants Conan and the others to fetch her back. Mm -hmm. Osric is played by Max von Sydow. Yep. Bloody, bloody Swede. 
Well, you know, you can say what you want about him, but he did a pretty damn good job in this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I mean, again, and I don't did, did we say that? No, I didn't. I don't think I said this. The, the whole reason why uh, James Earl Jones and uh, and uh, yeah, you just said it and my brain just my brain's out of it today. Uh, uh, yeah. Max Von sit out. the The reason why they were hi hired or taken in was because the studio was infinitely worried that there was no talent as far as acting went. <laughs> this was putting a lot on Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like you said, he was he basically he was basically going around and saying, you know, treat me like a training like you're training a dog. Yeah, and uh, they they were worried that this would be a big flop because they didn't have any acting talent. So they went out and they got James Earl Jones and uh, Max von Sydow because they had, you know, clout, not only in the industry, but they were really, really good actors. I mean, we all know that James Earl Jones was, you know, Vader, Darth Vader, but he has done so much more than that. And before that, I mean, he, he has such a long and has, you know, great career before that, but they, they got him so that it gave some grounding to what was going on. Cause like you said, also, I think this is before we started, you even said it, the, the rest of the people were picked because of the way they looked because they fit the look of the part that they were looking for, or they were beautiful or other things like that. Yeah. And the, uh, the uh, the lady, uh, Sandal Bergman, I think her name is, uh, she got hired because she had been um, a dance, she had played a dancer, and pretty much a background dancer in, in the movie because she used to be a dancer. And she got hired because of that, mm -hmm. uh, which works well if, if you're going to do a lot of action scenes and sword fighting. Oh, yeah. Oh, but um, yeah, so that's why uh, Max von Sydow was in it and uh, James Earl Jones was in it because it gave a grounding to the film that kind of played well against Arnold Schwarzenegger's real rough exterior and voice. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and Schwarzenegger and the others were pretty much hired to do physical acting. Mm hmm. But uh, to be fair, Arnold's acting isn't that bad in this movie. No, it, it isn't. No, 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 no. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying that I think the problem is, and if you think back on people like, uh, uh, not John Claude Van Damme, but uh, mm, yeah, uh, Fourth Rocky. Dolph Lundgren. Uh, yeah, thank you, Dolph Lundgren. It was that. It was the fact that, like, for some of the first Dolph Lundgren like movies were really hard to watch because it was very difficult to understand them. I don't think Arnold was that difficult by this time. He had been in the United States, I think, for a while. He was still doing things in Austria. He was still doing his bodybuilding building tournaments. But uh, from what I've read in the past, he was always wanting to work on his speaking ability. So he always had like a coach and stuff really early on because he. He was, uh, whether or not you think he's a good actor or not, he always has really wanted to to make himself better as an actor. Oh, yeah. He's, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is, is quite intelligent. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he has always realized his shortcomings and worked towards getting rid of them, which is uh, more than most people would do. Yeah. Hey, Rosetta, what's going on? <clears throat> Um, all right, so uh, he, he asks him to go and rescue his daughter, Princess uh, Yasmina, right? Yes, yeah, something. I don't think or he has. Well, yeah, but, um, and uh, yeah, she's a zealot basically now for Doom's cult. Yeah, and uh, Valeria, the female, uh, doesn't want to go with Conan. You know, and, and so does uh, it, it basically two out of the three don't want to. <laughs> Conan's like, oh, no, let's go. We'll do it. We'll do it. He hates Doom so much. He's like, hell yes, I'll go. Plus, he knows he's going to get paid very well. 
he he uh, sneaks off. Yes. And he's traveling around looking for the cults, finding uh, some followers of the cults, and then ending up near an old burial mound where mm -hmm. uh, an Asian wizard guy is living, played by Mako, was another terrific actor. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah, so, uh, but before that, isn't it, um, I think before that is when he gets, he goes and he disguises himself as a priest. Oh, that's right after. I that's thought it was right before. Oh, he asks the wizard if there's flowers around. And then he finds flowers and brings them, makes like a wreath, mm -hmm. then heads to the priests, knocks one out, takes his robe. That, that's right. But it, but he ends up back. So he goes and he, he, yeah, he just, he disguises himself as a priest. And he goes in, he's discovered and captured, tortured, uh, Doom of course lectures him like any good villain does when they have oh, yeah. the when they have the hero they've got to be like and exhibit a this is why you're stupid exhibit b this is why i'm better than you exhibit c this is why i'm going to win and yeah so on so um, he even uh, makes a point out of it by uh, making um, a young girl leap from a cliff yep to her death just yep. in faith and then he orders Conan to be crucified on the tree of woe. If I'm, yeah, tree of woe. Yeah. And th so and, they uh, go. Schwarzenegger does more violence to animals because he bites a vulture to death. Mm -hmm. Apparently, Schwarzenegger needed to get shots after that because there was a real dead vulture he was fighting. Lovely. Yeah. I, I did not know that. Um, hey, Rena or Rini. I, I, I'm, I'm going to just. I'm probably butchering your name today too, because I'm butchering every other name I'm saying today. So I apologize, but thank you for coming. Uh, I really do appreciate all you guys who are here. Um, so that's when uh, the wizard of the mounds. Uh, no, 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 no. The, uh, yeah. Valeria shows up and saves them. Yeah. And the wizard summons spirits to heal him. Yeah, and uh, he warns the others that there's going to be a cost. Yes. And Valeria says she's willing to pay every cost. And then we get a surprisingly well-done ghost scene. Mm -hmm. Ghost. Oh, no. with, um, yeah. The, the, uh, go ahead. I'm going to shut up for a second and let you say it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's... I'm not sure what kind of technology they use. It looks like they added some cartoony stuff on... Uh, on the video itself, but it works. Mm -hmm. I would say that uh, it's kind of like how they did the uh, stuff for um, Temple of Doom and things, where it was drawn, but then superimposed on top of the film itself. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, uh, and uh, but it looks good. Um, yeah. It works. Conan's healed, and they decide to head back to the temple to kick ass. Yes. So they flex their buttocks, sharpen their swords, and put on camouflage. They uh, because uh, they both uh, Valeria and uh, Su Subutai. Say, Subutai, thank you. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna mess these up. Um, but anyway, Subutai and Valeria agree to help Conan, and they infiltrate the Temple of Set. Yeah. Basically, there's a it, it, a cannibalistic orgy going on. Yeah, um, they have body parts in, in the soup, and then yeah, there's a bunch of them uh, practicing uh, non-safe sex in a mm -hmm. pile. So naturally, uh, oh, we get the uh, Tulsa Doom is watching, and we get to see him transform into a snake, and that morphing scene is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Um, mm -hmm. using a lot of uh, aesthetics and makeup and stuff, and it works so well. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, 
He slithers away because, and and so Conan isn't able to engage him. Uh, yeah, he slips into a hole in the, in the wall as a snake. Yeah, and then uh, grab the princess and kill a pile of people in very bloody manner. Mm -hmm. But Valeria is mortally wounded. Uh, I think he uses a like a frozen or stiffened snake and impales her with it. Isn't that how he does it? Uh, a Tulsa Doom is is watching from uh, above. Yeah, and he takes a, a small viper and kind of straightens it yeah. into into an arrow and shoots her with it. So she has a wiggling snake mm -hmm. in, in her side, which was uh, marvelously creative. As mm -hmm. as uh, still, you know, she dies. Yeah. Uh, she, in, in Conan's arms, in fact. Uh, and then I think that's when she says she understands that this is the toll that the wizard in, like warned her of. That basically for Conan's life, she, her life is now being taken. Yeah. Um, Which pisses Conan off. Yep. And uh, they return to the wizard, and they burn the body. Yep. On a on a spot where uh, the old wizard says the gods have made it so that fire won't burn in that area, but it does big time this time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they decide to, you know, they they still have the princess, so they decide to uh, make a last stand, basically. On the on the burial, burial mound, uh -huh. Conan then asks Crom, the god oh, that's, of people. That's a famous speech. Yep. Uh, epic. Uh, uh, very memorable, and Arnold really delivers that one too. Yeah, he does. I mean, and that's the thing. There is points of this that he really. Uh, he really um, does really good. Hold on. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, Arnold realized, you know, this is his shot. So he uh, did the best he could. And, uh, yeah, he did well. Yes, he did. Hold on. I'm trying to remember. Uh, to crush your enemies, to see them driven before you, and to hear limitations of their women. Mongol. Uh, that ain't a thing. What? That's from earlier. The no, that's for, yeah, yeah. I'm looking here. I'm trying to find it because I know that. Wait, is this the? No, that's not it. Hold on. Stop it. I'm trying to make sure what this. I'm trying to remember the whole damn thing. Uh... All right, let's see here. Krom, I have never prayed to you before. I have no tongue for it. No one, not even you, will remember if we were good men or bad. Why we fought or why we died. All that matters is that two stood against many. That's what's important. Valor pleases you, Krom, so grant me one request. Grant me revenge. And if you do not listen, then to hell with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the way he does it, the way he delivers it is really really done well i mean yeah. Again, it, I, just, yeah, I, I guess that's the highlight of, of arnold in this movie mm -hmm. in terms of acting this is uh he really shines in that scene then they uh they use a bunch of booby traps and uh use the terrain uh they manage to slay most of if not all of the warriors uh from all except, all except one who uh, starts to beat Conan. Yeah. But then Valeria shows up, uh, slashes him in the face, blinding the guy. Yeah, she's a, yeah, she shows up as a Valkyrie. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. And yeah, basically Just, saves him from a mortal blow. And then Conan goes ape shit on the guy, mm -hmm. uh, chops him into a bunch of pieces, I guess. 
then uh, Doom tries the same trick he used with Valeria um, on the princess. By yeah. sh- basically shooting a stiffened snake at her. Uh, but uh, Subatai, did I say it right this time? <laughs> yeah, he plays the goalkeeper. Basically. Yes, he so, uh, blocks the shot. Yeah, with the shield. Yep, and then as all good villains do at this point of the movies, they and he runs away, goes back to his temple. Yeah, um, and uh, it's just um, um, one of those few movies where all of the main characters actually contribute because Valeria and Subutai are not there to make Conan look good. They actually help him. And they, uh, yeah, they contribute. Yes. Um, So basically they go back to the temple. um, Conan does solo. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And he goes there. He recovers his uh, father's sword. Yeah, the broken sword. Uh, he actually breaks it himself. Yes. The guy who was trying to kill him had it. Mm-hmm. So he has basically half a sword. With yeah. Him. Uh, he's, and I don't understand, but he kind of sneaks back into the temple, probably because I guess he feels Doom can see him wherever he's coming from. Uh, but there's still the members of his cult there. Doom's addressing them. Uh, Conan confronts him and yeah, on the balcony. Yeah. And of course, Doom welcomes him. Yeah. And attempts to mesmerize him or, you know, use his powers on him. Yeah. The same thing he did with his mom. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but it, Conan snaps out of it and uh, chops the guy's head off. Yep. Three or four swings. Mm-hmm. And tosses the head down to the cultists. Mm-hmm. But it's very grim. Oh, yeah. And it, it, he burns down the temple after the, the cultists who are now very surprised and, and probably mortified that their leader is shorter than he was a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, he he's not the head of, he's not the head of the cult anymore. Yeah. Yeah, no, he 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 lost his head. He's no longer the head. Uh, yeah. but Conan burns down the temple and takes the princess back to Or Orzric. That's basically well, he leaves with the princess. Uh, he doesn't take her back. I thought um, he took her back. There's a deleted scene where uh, Osric's men turn on him and kill him, stab him to shit. Oh. But they couldn't do the scene right, so uh, he's dead off screen. But um, he's dead. Who, who's dead off screen? Osric. Oh, yeah. No. He gets killed by his own men. But he, yeah, but he goes back to take. I mean, it, basically, like I said, he goes back to take her there. That's what he's doing. If I remember right, that doesn't, I mean, he did, I'm not saying he goes back and he makes it back to there to yeah. give it back, but that's what he's in the process of doing at the end of this film. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, means, what's going on? Uh, then we get a little epilogue of Conan at some point becoming a king. Mm-hmm. You see a little shot of him sitting on the throne mm-hmm. as an older man. And then the epic soundtrack uh, starts oh, again. Yeah, the soundtrack of this. Uh, I mean, again, a really good movie is not a good movie necessarily without a good soundtrack. Yeah, and, and this soundtrack is easily a 10 out of 10. Oh, yeah, no, I would say, yeah. It's a sort of soundtrack, though, that's you, you should play it loud. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember here. I'm going in. It was done by Basil. Uh, yeah. Pola Dorva, Doris, 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 or something like that. So he passed away a few months ago. Yeah, I, I had heard that. But 
again, I don't know what else he has done. I'd have to go back and find out. Um, Santa Cecilia, yeah. or Santa Cecilia uh, Orchestra, I guess, did the uh, soundtrack with him, which is, uh, you know, most people back then were using the London Symphony Orchestra on things like this. Uh, oh, shoot. Holy crap. I didn't know that until just now. He was born here in Kansas City, Missouri. August 21st, 1945. See what a small world this is? <clears throat> he did the soundtrack for Red Dawn. Did he? Yeah. Oh, my. Robocop. Iron Eagle. Flash. Starship Troopers. Right. Conan. The Hunt for Red October. Oh, wow. 45 more. Holy crap. Harley Davidson and the Marble Man. Uh, Free Willy. <laughs> Big Wednesday. Never heard of it. Blue Lagoon. I've heard of that. Farewell to the King, Flesh and Blood, Flight of the Intruder, Quigley Down Under. Oh, wow. Oh, that's an underrated movie. Yeah, well, you oh, know, I love that movie. The, uh, soundtrack for the Lonesome Dove uh, miniseries. Yeah, Les Mis, Les, Les Mis, Robocop 3, Free Willy 2, On Deadly Ground, For the Love of, of the Game, White Fang, Hot Shots Part 2. <laughs> yeah, he's he's done a lot. Crocodile Dundee, Los Angeles, uh, Return to Blue Lagoon, Iron Eagle, Mickey Blue Eyes, Wind, Under Siege 2. Interesting. Wow, I didn't know he'd done all these. No Man's Land, The Jungle Book, uh, Spellbinder, Lassie, one of the remakes. Switch back, split decisions. Fireman War at Home. Wow, that's amazing. He did do a ton of stuff. See what you learn when you when you look these things up, guys. Yeah, <laughs> but I guess his first one was Conan. It looks like. Yeah, I don't know. Least, uh, oh, no, 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 the Blue Lagoon was the first one, nineteen eighty or seventy eight. Been Big Wednesday, I guess. I don't know. But this is what he's going to be known for, though. Easily, uh, yeah, I would. I could go with that. I mean, I like uh, looking back at these movies. I'm like, I, I, I like a lot of these, but yeah, I mean, the way that it's done, it's very much. Uh, this is very much a uh, like a because um, it's so epic, and I know a ton of people who have bought the soundtrack for this one. I have it on record. Yeah, you know, so, that's the best. That's the only way to listen to music, by the way. Just so you guys know. Yeah, this th this soundtrack is up there with Star Wars. Oh Charles yeah, no, yeah. I mean, I, I love movie soundtracks when they're done right because, again, you can take a mediocre movie, <clears throat> and if you put an excellent soundtrack behind it, it elevates that movie. Let's say if it's a five, it'll elevate it to a seven. Yeah, because the because while the guy who shoots the movie, the cinematographer, the director, the editors, the producers, whoever, when they're dabbling with what they're doing, the cuts and all that, they may not do it as well as they should. But if the, mo if the movie is moved and a lot of the things that happen are accentuated by the music, that helps move it forward and that helps tell the story also. It gives you... Yeah. <laughs> well, movies kind of uh, assault you in in three ways. It's it's through your vision, mm -hmm. hearing, and emotions. And mm -hmm. uh, if any of those are elevated, it makes for a better movie. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I when I was in uh, film appreciation class, um, the teacher of this particular one, because I went to four altogether, four different types of uh, classes, some, uh, one in high school and three in college courses. Uh, one of the last, actually the last one that I went to, the guy actually had somebody go back and redub. Uh, oh, shoot, what was it? I can't remember the name of the movie. They, they had him redub the music to it. And what, he, what the professor wanted him to do is, is, I guess he told him, when it's a sad moment, I want you to make music that's happy. 
when there's a happy moment, I want you to make music that's sad. When there's a lot of action going on, I want you to make a very subtle, very minimal soundtrack or, you know, put very minimal sound into it. So this guy went and did that and they redubbed the music to it. And what he did by doing that was to show us that when the music is not placed right, you don't hold the same emotions for a situation. So if the hero loses somebody like Valeria, and there's happy music being played, you're not going to feel the true sorrow or the true pain going on, no matter what's being acted. Yeah, makes sense. And and it was really profound the way that it is. Cause I, actually, I can't remember the movie right offhand. I'll try to some other time, but it was really obvious in this movie. And it was like, holy crap, that's crazy. That even though you knew this movie, and you knew what happened and you knew where things were sad and where things were, you know, going on that just by changing music, you changed how you perceived the movie. So that's, that's why I say music in a movie can make or break a movie, even if it's excellently acted, even if everybody's the best actor you could ever get and everything's done perfectly, all the cutting and all the, the editing is perfect. You screw that music up then you could really screw a movie up. So yeah, you're absolutely right. The, the, this movie is so well highlighted by the music and how it was done. So. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, every track is pretty much a masterpiece. Yes. Um, so let's get down to brass tacks. We like to give you a uh, rating on this. Uh, Steve oh, and I, I have some trivia. No, go ahead. Okay, let's do some trivia. Yeah. Valeria. Mm -hmm. uh, in the comics, was just a minor love interest for, for Conan. She was, she was actually a pirate. But Conan's main love interest was a woman named Bellet, who was mm -hmm. also a pirate, pirate queen. Uh, she was dressed exactly like Valeria in this movie. So it's almost like they used Bellets and then just changed the name and the character, really. But they kept the look. Yeah, and that probably happens a lot when they're going back to source material. They're like, yeah, we don't like this, but we want this or some. I don't know. Um, or sometimes somebody who does the his, is doing the research on it, you know, because they always all these movies, if they come from some sort of source material, which again in today's world of movies when they can't follow source materials really a glaring problem because they do hire researchers for this stuff yeah and uh, the in the sequel there's a character named zula played mm -hmm. by grace jones mm -hmm. zula was actually uh, a guy yep. in the comics and uh so you want to talk about race swapping or or no it wasn't race swapping no uh, not race swapping i mean uh gender gender swapping yeah it's been going on for years, people. I mean, yeah. and, and and yeah. So I mean, it, it all depends. I don't ever jump on board the race or the race or the gender swapping until I see the movie, and then I can say, okay, it didn't make a difference. They didn't yeah, put a gender. No difference. In, no. In, in, in the Conan sequel, but Conan was made. Uh, the comics were made by Marvel at the time, mm -hmm. so. Grace Jones never gets credit for being a strong female in, in a Marvel movie. Because mm. she kicks ass in the second movie. She's awesome. Yeah, but back then, the Marvel, I don't even think they had a movie division. Just people bought the, they, they bought the rights to do it. And somewhere in the crawl, it just says, you know, characters and, you know, uh, you know, characters in this movie are, you know, were created by, you know, so-and-so and then uh, property of Marvel. Yeah. And that's all it's going to say. It's going to be in that crawl, like about this big and that's it. And they're going to be done. Yeah. Um, it's, it's still a Marvel movie. It is. And I'm sure Disney owns it. And I'm sure that unfortunately at some point here, Disney well, will try to soften kind, it. Some guy in Sweden owns uh, Conan now. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, someone bought Conan. So did he but, buy uh, it from Marvel? 
or buy the, the did he buy the rights outright for everything and then Marvel has to pay him if they do it? Uh, he owns the whole damn thing. Good, good, good. Uh, but uh, you know when people go, you know, oh, we finally have a you know a black female in a Marvel movie. Yeah, you had that in in uh, eighty five or something in, in in the Conan sequel. Grace Jones mm -hmm. gives credit. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm looking here. I I don't know. Should we ever do the sequel? Should we ever talk no. about the sequel? No, let's let's not. <laughs> let's let sleeping dogs lie. <laughs> um, any other trivia? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Um. Uh, AFK Bard, uh, yes, they did actually do a pretty good job of that. Um, and Memes is right. Music is soul. And it, and the music of this movie is the soul of this movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and like you said, done very well. So Stieg and I have, and I know sometimes we forget to do this, so I'm trying not to forget this. Um, we give you a score of whatever out of 10, but how we do that is we each give a one out of five for the movie, and then we combine them and give you a whatever out of 10. Uh, Steve, I'm going to let you go first, uh, give your explanations for why, and uh, give us your score. Um, a five. Mm -hmm. okay. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a sword and sorcery movie done extremely well. Uh, a soundtrack that surpasses all expectations, really. Mm-hmm. Um, Arnold does a very good job. Uh, the supporting actors are great. You know, James Earl Jones is awesome as always. Uh, but, uh, you know, Mako, the, uh, Asian wizard is mm -hmm. awesome. Oh yeah. And the, uh, Conan sidekicks do a really good job as well. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with this movie. It's well-made. The story is, you know, there's no plot holes or anything. The writing is good, solid. The action scenes are amazing. Uh -huh. And apart from that stuff with certain characters, it sticks to the soul of the source material. Uh -huh. almost completely. It's supposed to be gritty and, and violent, so uh -huh. that's what you get. Yeah. So five out of five from Stieg. I'm going to give it a five, too. And here's what I say about this. Uh, first off, let's talk about the uh, the screenplay is written by Oliver Stone. If you didn't know that, that's Oliver Stone. You know JFK and all the other crazy stuff out there. Um, yeah, Platoon, uh, Natural Born. Didn't he do right? Natural Born Killers. Yeah, yeah. Um, this so this is where he was, you know, getting his craft together. And it, it shows because anytime you take um, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Sandal Bergman, and who played uh, the third one? Um, it's a surfer. Um, Mako? No, no, no. Uh, Mako played the wizard. Okay, yeah, that's right. Uh, no, uh, is it? Uh, I got Ben Davidson. I think that's it, isn't it? No, I'll, I'll look it up. It's uh, yeah, let me know who it is. Uh, but anytime, here's the deal: yeah, these guys Jerry were Lopez. what Jerry Lopez. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, anytime yeah. you take three people who are not inherently actors, and then you stack on the other side of it two people who are actors, James Earl Jones and Max Van Sydow. Anytime you do that, you understand that you need to have that balance. And, and and in some ways that helped this movie so much that the people who weren't really inherently actors probably felt like they had to do better. And they, they upped their game a little bit, which oh, yeah. really brings that move, this movie up along, like I said, writing the special effects for the time. And even somewhat to this day, if you just kind of look at it, it still holds up really well. And this movie overall holds up really well. Um, I don't know if they've done a Blu-ray like remastering of it yet or not. I hope they have, cause I'd love to get it, but 
um, this movie in 1280p, I think, would look great. The uh, Blu-ray I have looks pretty damn good. Yeah, um, and not sure what they did with it though. I just, I, I really don't look at that. I just put it in the player and watch it. <laughs> that's, well, that's true. But no, I, I mean, I like. Uh, I would love to see this in an HD format. Uh, because I'm sure, and if you've watched it, Steve, I'm sure you can tell me that it really holds up still. Oh, yeah. um, I can't imagine it doesn't. But everything they did in this, um, plus uh, this was originally released uh, a day after my birthday in 1982 when I was five years old. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I love, I just like the fact that, you know, like you said, for what it is, the sword sorcery fantasy movie it, it does it just right. And I think back in the 80s, there were several of these movies like this that really captured it well. Um, and it doesn't have to be the greatest uh, the greatest acting, the greatest you know, directing or anything of all time. It's the sum of the whole that makes a difference. Yeah, it's, so, it, it's, it's supposed to be entertaining and exactly. an adventure story. Yeah. And, 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 and that well written. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing. That's why you, I, I, that's why I give it a five is because when I watch this movie, I'm entertained and there's nothing distracting me from there. There's nothing that takes me out of the element that I'm in. There's nothing that is glaringly bad. I love Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't care if he couldn't talk, you know, the greatest in the world. Uh, it didn't never, it never mattered to me because I liked the guy. He fits Conan's persona. And he plays him perfectly in this movie. Um, so, uh, you know, for being what it was, it was, uh, you know, Schwarzenegger's role that made him recognized worldwide. Uh, if I remember right, the film grossed around 300 million in the mid 2000s. And uh, it's known as a, a cult favorite. Oh, which, yeah kind of a weird way of putting it because I think it, it, it for a cult favorite the amount of money that it's made doesn't really place it there the amount of money it's made for what it put what, what was put into it again it was 20 million put into it and originally around 80 out that was the box office was about 80 out and you know anytime what is that that's a that's a four times the money back oh. you know so I mean come on <laughs> If you get that today, you're considered just rolling in the dough. Yeah, and uh, uh, I've never heard anyone say this movie sucks. I've never heard anyone really dislike this movie, even if they don't like the genre or Arnold. Because, you know, there's yeah. people out there that don't like Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. But uh, I don't know why, but this is the third or the second Arnold movie we've talked about. Um, didn't we talk about Terminator? No, we have not. Wait, no, we have not. We wanted to. It's on our list of stuff to do. And we did Predator. Yeah, we did Predator. Uh, so this is our second Arnold movie. I know uh, hopefully next week um, we're going to do Running Man. And then uh, I think we can do like Terminator and some other stuff. Guys, uh, the easy, easy thing to do is if you have a movie you want us to review, um, probably something we've already seen, I'm sure, because I've seen a ton and ton of movies. And uh, Steve, I know you've seen quite a few movies too. Um, yeah. uh, we, we always try to talk about movies we can talk about for an hour, though. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Police Academy 4 is out the window. Oh, I don't know. I could talk about an hour about how Tony Hawk's in it and some other stuff. Oh, wait, never mind. I'm sorry. Sharon, Sharon Stone. Sam. David Spade. Oh, yeah. He was. <laughs> He's one of the punk kids that is is sentenced to the COP program. Yeah. Citizens on patrol. Citizens on patrol. <laughs> you, gotta love, you know what? I think we could do a movie talk on the police academy series yeah that's possible i uh, maybe i don't know guys uh do hercules in new york dandelion fluff just put it out there yeah uh arnold's yeah. first movie with the so americanized accent that it was so oh god that's so cringe to watch it 
Yeah, and he, he beats up a guy who was in an obvious bear costume. Yeah. In the park. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. I can't watch that movie anymore because I know what Arnold Schwarzenegger sounds like. So when you watch his mouth move and that voice comes out, it's like, wow. They just didn't. I, I think that's that's a, a, a somebody didn't think ahead and think this guy might become famous someday. <laughs> yeah. Would it be oh, funny? Uh, <clears throat> oh, uh, go ahead. <clears throat> we could do Total Recall as well. Oh, I'd love to do Total Recall. Um, I'm a big Philip K. Dick fan, of course. Well, I I mean we talked about this uh, with the uh, Blade Runner. Um, you know, Philip K. Dick, A Scanner Darkly, uh, Total Recall, M Minority Report, uh, both technically both of the Blade Runners, because the, the sequel he was writing for Do Android's Dream of Electric Sheep was loosely parts that they pulled from, uh, or they pulled parts from it and loosely used it and sprinkled it into Blade Runner 2049, along with some of the stuff that they didn't use in the original Blade Runner. Uh, so, yeah, no, I mean, I like a lot of the stuff. But, guys, if you want, there's an undubbed version available. There is. Oh, you know, boy. I think he's right because I seem to remember uh, seeing that. I have to check it out. I have to check out the undubbed version. Um, so, guys, yeah, yeah, you can email me at Chris Knight at the real review 3000.com. You can DM me on Twitter. My DMs are open. That is at Chris Knight 5150. Uh, you can do that. Uh, you, Facebook, Instagram, all of those have ways of messaging me. Uh, do that, please. Um, if you have any suggestions on movies, we are more than willing to talk about movies. Uh, we love doing this, and uh, we're doing better on how often we do them now. Um, the last one we did before this was half a year ago. Um, oh, well, wasn't it? No, May it, May eleventh. So like right when the, so just a couple months ago. So, and then before that, it was a couple months before that, or actually, yeah, two months before that. So we're doing better because before that, we were, I'm trying to look back in this, uh, the before that, before the, uh, <clears throat> oh, whoops, I have to look it up like this. Let's see here. For that, it was October, so that was that was the uh, Halloween one. So yeah, we, we went a long stretch between the two. Uh, we went almost six months before we did another one. So we often know people will get sick of us. Yeah, you know, but but yeah, no, we're uh, we're definitely trying to get these uh, views up on these. Uh, go back and check out the other one. We have three live stream versions and i'll go back and make sure i have all the proper tags in them and stuff and uh we got five or four four or five four uh not streamed and then there's one more which we don't have labeled as movie talk i might go back and label it as movie talk even though it was on the gospel according to chris steeg you were on the first gospel according to chris? no second gospel according to chris uh I think I'd have to go back and check that, but uh, the gospel, according to Chris, you look that up and look for Stieg's name and you will find out that he has done. It was episode. Oh, wow. Actually episode six. I thought it was that, but that one, we talk about Blade Runner and Blade Runner 2049. Uh, oh, yeah. and that, that one counts. Yes, it does. And then, like I said, that was the first official, movie talk and that's where we kind of got this idea from uh yeah. and so, uh, the, the one we did uh, during halloween was the shining yep. and we had miss sarcastic nerd with us and she knew a hell of a lot about the shining so oh yes we actually got on the uh uh jj was doing a stream a couple nights ago and i jumped on that and we kind of jumped into movies uh jeff the rookie critic was on there hey dan uh, david how you doing um Jeff, the rookie critic, was on there, and uh, him and I started talking movies, and we got into Stanley Kubrick, and of course, then Miss and I started kind of going into how important it is sometimes 
even more so what they do behind the actors and behind what you're paying attention to, because that was Stanley Kubrick's thing in The Shining. It was everything going on behind the action, per se, the, the acting and stuff, meant just as much as what was going on right there. So, um, the, again, like movie, all movies, sometimes it's the way it's done and it's what you don't see or you don't notice happening that really makes that movie that much better. So, but with that said, we're going to wrap this up. Uh, go ahead, Stieg, tell everybody about yourself, uh, where they can find you because it's becoming infinitely harder to find you. <laughs> well, yeah, I am force ghost. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> I just pop up when I wish. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm not really a YouTuber. I'm just, uh, Analysts who talks to YouTubers, I guess. Mm -hmm. Stuff I like. Yeah. Um, I have a little YouTube channel with some videos on it, mostly some funny ones. People seem to think they're funny. So oh, yeah. I do them now and again. But um, oh, and there's a lot of retro stuff that I uploaded that I don't own that huh. uh, I got away with. Cool. I have a He Man episode. You don't have that. No, I don't. I have That's Mask, awesome. Jason the Wheeled Warriors, and Brave Star. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, guys, do me a favor. Go over there to his channel. Subscribe, don't subscribe, whatever, but check out his content. He, he's got some funny stuff on there, and Steve's a great guy. Um, I feel honored that you, you do these with me. I really do. I want you to know that. Um, I really they're, appreciate your time. They're, they're fun, so it's a no-brainer. So if I have time and... Mm -hmm. And all that, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, and exactly. Also, also, sub to Tommy in the chat. You know, he's he's doing a hell of a lot of cool retro stuff. And yes, Tommy uh, is a great guy. Thank you, Tommy, for doing the uh, modding. I really, really do appreciate the mod. He's um, an actual YouTuber. I'm not. He's oh yeah yeah no he is he's and he's got a channel, guys. So go check him out. And uh, yeah, guys, I'm trying to get up to three thousand subscribers currently at this moment. I am at. It's not really the real review three thousand unless you get three thousand subs, is it? I guess not. I mean, you know. But then, then do I change the title? Do I change the title every time I get a new sub count? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm at twenty seven sixteen right now. I'm trying to get up to three thousand subscribers, guys. If you are not subscribed, because I just noticed the other day um, that fifty one point eight percent of my viewership comes from people who are not subscribed and i know some people don't want a youtube channel but it doesn't take anything to go and just kind of duh, 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 to just put out some make some random you know email address that you'll never look at to get your account you don't have to give them real information just call yourself uh a conan the barbarian um or something like that and uh, please sub, guys. Uh, I also have a Patreon page now, guys. If you're interested, please go over there and look. That's patreon.com forward slash TRR3K. We do have some great, great um, perks over there. Check it out. Um, and with that said, thank you for coming, everybody. We're going to head out. Uh, anything else, Steve? No. Have okay. a splendid day, all of you, and take care in that. Enjoy yourselves. All right. Say bye. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for checking us out. Be sure to subscribe to both channels, and make sure to check out our friends in the Fandom Minutes. You can find us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and BitChute, and you can also send us an email at sean at seanstackhousereacts.com and Chris Knight at therealreview3000.com. Be sure to swing by our Teespring store to pick up some awesome merchandise. 